Ever wondered how understanding the hierarchy of financial needs by Maslow can transform your financial life? From basic necessities to financial growth and philanthropy, this hierarchy outlines the key steps to achieving financial well-being. In this video, we'll dive deep into Maslow's theory and explore why it matters for managing your money effectively. Maslow's hierarchy of needs tells us how our desires and motivations influence our lives. It's like a guide that can be useful in different areas, like finance and business, where motivation can help people reach their fullest potential. According to Maslow, we prioritize our needs on a psychology theory. First, we focus on fulfilling our basic survival needs, like food, water, and shelter. Then, as those needs are met, we move up to satisfying psychological needs. At the top is self-actualization, where we feel content and fulfilled by reaching our potential. Imagine this hierarchy as a ladder. You start at the bottom and climb step by step. You won't think about prestige if you're struggling to find food and shelter. The idea is to fulfill the needs at the bottom first before moving up. Think about it in terms of spending money. When you consider buying something, ask yourself which need it's fulfilling. Are you trying to satisfy a higher need at the expense of a lower one? Are there cheaper options that can fulfill the same need? Is it fulfilling the need you think it is? In the end, everyone wants to fulfill all levels of their needs. The lower ones are more important, but deep down, we strive to satisfy them all. Understanding this can help you make better decisions about how you spend your money and live your life. The goal is to reach the top, which is self-actualization. But Maslow knew that not everyone gets there easily. The first four levels are like deficiency needs, and we should focus on fulfilling them before aiming for self-actualization. But these levels are all connected. It's not like you strictly have to go from one to the other. Sometimes you might jump around a bit, and that's alright. Before we dive deeper, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more incredible, life-changing content. Now, let's move on. Now let's talk about applying this to our money matters. We'll see how we can achieve self-actualization and financial success while considering each level of needs. Let's look at Maslow's hierarchy of financial needs pyramid. Financial survival. The first stage in Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of financial needs is all about our basic needs, like staying alive and surviving. Just like any other living beings, humans also prioritize survival above everything else. At the bottom of the pyramid are our physiological needs, which means things like having enough money to cover essential expenses. We have to quench our thirst, fill our bellies with food, breathe fresh air, and have a warm place to sleep under a roof. Sadly, not everyone has it easy, and some people struggle to meet these basic needs. They may face financial setbacks and have to work extra hard just to make ends meet. That's when it's okay to take on consumer debt, but only for needs, not wants. Once you've got your survival needs covered, you can start looking ahead. It's a good idea to invest in yourself, like getting more education and training in skills that can bring in more money. This way you can progress and move up the ladder to the next level. Financial stability. The second level is all about feeling safe and secure, which also means achieving financial stability. Once your basic needs are covered, you start thinking about protecting yourself from unexpected money problems. Life can throw unexpected costs at us, like losing a job, needing dental work, or your pet requiring surgery. But sometimes, good opportunities also come along that need money. So, we want to be prepared for both good and bad surprises. To avoid slipping back into financial survival mode, we need to save. The first thing is to build an emergency fund. Save up at least three months' worth of living expenses and keep it in a high-interest account. If you're unsure about the future, try to save up to six months' worth. Budgeting is also crucial for financial stability. When you control your money by living below your means, you'll have extra money left over each month. With that surplus, you can invest in low-risk options like high-yield savings accounts, savings bonds, and money market accounts. Financial stability means having a steady income, sticking to a budget, and paying your monthly bills on time. When you have all of this in place, you can build your emergency fund and start saving for the future. Building a strong foundation to secure financial well-being is crucial. Wealth Accumulation once you've achieved financial stability, it's time to think about wealth accumulation. As social beings, we crave love, connection, and belonging with our families, friends, and community. Interacting with others, whether in person, on the phone, or through social media, it helps us meet our social needs and build our reputation. In this phase, most people spend a big part of their lives. To start, pay off any high-interest debts you have and focus on your budget. Try to increase your income, save more, and spend wisely on things that matter to you. 
These steps will help you save more money. As your savings grow, you should consider investing in riskier assets to build your wealth. If you don't, inflation can eat away at the value of your money, making it harder to achieve your financial goals. It's essential to set your financial goals to secure your future. Good credit is crucial if you want to buy things like cars or homes with low interest loans. To achieve your goals, you'll need a financial plan. Think about saving for your kids' college education, contributing to retirement accounts that offer tax benefits, and growing investments that you can access anytime. The wealth accumulation stage might take a long time, even decades, but that's normal for most people. In the process, it's easy to get distracted or start spending more as your income increases. But stay focused on your goals and be mindful of your spending. Keep a plan to prevent lifestyle creep, where you start spending more as you earn more. The most important thing is to spend intentionally on things that bring you happiness. So, have clear goals, follow a plan, and be mindful of your spending to ensure a brighter future for yourself and your loved ones. Financial Freedom Financial freedom is linked to self-esteem need, which is all about feeling good about yourself and what you've achieved. Before getting here, we need to meet our basic needs like survival, feeling safe, and having loving relationships. At this stage, we've accomplished a lot. Maybe we have a great job or business, and we're earning more money. We feel proud of our abilities and what we've achieved, getting recognition and respect from others. People might even look up to us for our success. Retirement could be on the horizon, and we're managing our wealth for the next phase of life. We feel accepted in society and our community, and our social status reflects our accomplishments and financial situation. This is where financial freedom can kick in. When we manage our money well and have accomplished a lot, we feel more confident and secure. It's a great place to be, where we can enjoy the fruits of our hard work and feel good about ourselves. Sometimes, when we don't feel good about ourselves, we might try to impress others by spending more than we should. We believe that having more stuff will make us happy, but that's not always true. Even rich people may not be truly content with what they have. Instead, finding meaning and purpose in life can bring more satisfaction. If you find this video informative, like and subscribe to this channel for more educative content. Let's continue. To achieve financial independence, there are three main strategies. Retirement savings, saving money for the future when we stop working. The 4% safe withdrawal rate, withdrawing a small percentage of our savings each year to support ourselves. And passive income, earning money without actively working, like from investments or rental properties. Most people use a combination of these strategies to reach their version of financial freedom. It's not just about having more things, it's about finding purpose and being in control of our finances. Building Legacy The top stage on the hierarchy of financial needs is building your legacy, which translates to self-actualization. Maslow, in his book Motivation and Personality, said, What a man can be, he must be. It means we have this inner drive called self-actualization that pushes us to reach our full potential and achieve everything we can. Everyone has the ability and desire to move up in life, aiming for self-actualization. But sometimes, life throws obstacles our way, like getting sick, going through a tough divorce, or losing a job. We may struggle to meet our basic needs and fail to progress. Maslow thought only 2% of people would truly reach self-actualization. He gave examples of self-actualized individuals like Abraham Lincoln, Albert Einstein, Gandhi, and others. Self-actualized people have some special traits. They see reality clearly and handle uncertainty well. They accept themselves and others as they are, are spontaneous, and focus on solving problems rather than being selfish. They also have a great sense of humor, are creative, and care about the welfare of others. They cherish important life experiences and form deep relationships with a few people. They have peak experiences that are special to them. They value privacy, believe in democracy, and have strong moral standards. These are the qualities of successful people, often leaders in organizations and businesses. When you become financially self-actualized, you start thinking about your legacy and how to secure the future for your loved ones. After managing your finances well, enjoying a good income, and having a strong financial plan, it's time to think about the next generation. You might plan to pass on your wealth to your children through tax and estate planning, or even make charitable donations to causes you care about. Reaching this level is a huge accomplishment. It's not just about taking care of yourself, but also ensuring a financially secure future for those you love. You've worked hard all your life to get here, and now you want to give back and make a difference. The ultimate goal is not just about being successful for yourself, but using your special talents to contribute to the world. 
we all have something unique to offer. So, think about ways to leave a lasting legacy, support causes that matter to you, and make a positive impact on the world. That's what it means to reach the top step on the hierarchy of financial needs. Understanding this framework can be a game-changer in how you approach your finances and life goals. From meeting our basic survival needs to achieving financial freedom and leaving a meaningful legacy, each step plays a crucial role in our journey toward financial well-being. So, prioritize your needs, set clear financial goals, and work towards building a solid foundation for your future. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content on personal finance.